Okay, I'm totally in love with Google Drive to organize your business. If you're a small business owner or an entrepreneur, organizing your files probably isn't your top priority. It's one of those boring admin things that you always put off, right? However, having your files organized is the foundation of a flourishing business. Not only will it help reduce anxiety and overwhelm, it's also much easier to delegate tasks. Well, all of this is possible with Google Drive and it's simpler than you might think. In fact, it's super simple. All you need is a structure and a system to work within this structure. So in this video, I'll share both of these things with you. I'll show you how to organize your business within Google Drive and I'll also provide a free structure template that you can download in the, in the end. So definitely make sure to stick around till the end. And I'll show you step by step all the tips and hacks and tricks that you can use to to have a perfect structure and have all your files perfectly organized. By the way, if you're interested in organizing your business in general and setting up simple systems that will help you work more efficiently, definitely be sure to hit the subscribe button down below because I'll be coming out with more videos like this one every single week. Okay, let's dive in. Okay, so there are three main reasons why Google Drive is my favorite option when it comes to organizing my business files. Number one, it's super easy to access. You just get one account with each Gmail account. Number two, it offers different document options that can basically totally replace your Microsoft Office package. So you have Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google Slides, and many more, I think. So you can absolutely work only within this application or this cloud. And number three, I love the design. It's clean, simple, and customizable. All right, so I've got seven tips and one bonus tip that will help you organize your Google Drive for business. Number one, create one folder for your business. Okay, so this tip is especially useful if you're having several business ventures or if, you have, if you're running several businesses, then you want to have one folder for each business. Or if you also have private documents in your Google Drive, then definitely create a folder for your business. But if you only have one Gmail account that's only for your business and you, you'll you only use that Google Drive for your one and only business, then you technically, technically don't have to do that. So in my case, I run two businesses and I've had a bunch of other business ventures. So I tried out a bunch of different things. So what I have is one overarching folder for my two businesses that I run and then one folder for each venture that I've that I used to run or that I used to try out. So in my case, I called it niche websites. You can call it whatever you like. You can call it business or whatever suits you. So in my case, I started out with, uh, it was basically two websites in the beginning. Now one of them also has a coaching business. So that's my main thing. But the overarching topic for me was niche websites. So that's what I called it. Number two, create one folder for each part of your business. Okay, so now we go into that overarching folder that in my case is called niche websites. And then we create, create subfolders for each part. So let's take Habits in Progress, my coaching business as an example. So I obviously have one folder for coaching because that's the main thing that I do. But then I also do videos as I'm doing now. I publish articles and I also have an Instagram account. Additionally to that, I also have some general admin stuff that doesn't really belong anywhere else. So I have a folder for that as well. And I'll also definitely be hiring freelancers in the future. So there's another folder. As you can see, there isn't a file or there isn't a folder for finances at the moment. And that's because my only revenue is coming from my coaching business. So for me, it makes most sense to have it under this category, under this folder. So this is where I have a folder for for my contracts and for my finances and all these things. And it wouldn't make sense to take that up a level if it belongs to that category. However, if you have multiple streams of income, it might make sense to take that folder up and to have it on the same level as the other parts of your business. But if it's like just, let's say you have two separate income streams, then I still think it makes more sense to have it under each category because it's much more, it's much, much easier to access it and it's more of a logical structure that you go down the line and then you get to that folder that belongs to this part of your business. Number three, create more subfolders if you have a lot of files or a lot of different files. So now that you've created a bunch of folders for each part of your business, you have two choices. 
Either you just put all of your documents in that one folder or you create more subfolders for different kind of documents. So I'll show you two examples. Let's take my Instagram folder in my coaching business as the first example. So as you can see, I currently only have two documents in there. So it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to create more subfolders because currently I have a great overview and there isn't a huge mess or it isn't overwhelming or anything. Now let's take my coaching business folder as the second example. As you can see, there are already a lot of subfolders and that is because I have a ton of documents in there. And so if I just kept that in that one big folder that's called coaching business, it would be a huge mess. I wouldn't find anything and it just wouldn't make any sense. So as soon as you have a whole lot of documents or a lot of very different documents, so that for instance, you have a couple of questionnaires, then you have a couple of contracts and then you have a couple of quotes or things that you're going to post in a Facebook group, then it's going to be really messy and you'll use the overview of what's going on. That's when you should create different subfolders to create a more detailed structure. Number four, have one document for strategies or ideas for each part of your business. All right, so by now we've created an overarching folder, a bunch of subfolders and maybe even sub subfolders for each part of your business. Now it's time to create a document where you can let where you can collect your strategies or ideas because I think there is nothing worse than having a bunch of ideas but nowhere to write it down. You'll only forget about them again and it will stress you out because you, you've had this great idea and then it's gone and that's really frustrating. So there's a better way. Create at least one Google Sheets for each part of your business where you collect ideas. So let's take my YouTube folder as an example. As you can see, I have these Google Sheets in here and this is where I collect the ideas and mostly do some research around it as well so that I know if there is a lot of competition going on, how the search volume is, so just some more analytical data. But it's basically just a file where I can dump my ideas and I know they're there. I can access it from my phone if I'm on the go somewhere. So you really want to have that one document where all of these ideas and things that come up during the day can go in. Another thing that I found really useful, especially in the beginning of my business, was to create a workflow for each task. So for instance, I would create a workflow for my blog post. So uh, that means I would outline every step of the process. So I would start with, for instance, finding an idea, creating or doing the research, creating an outline and so on. So I would write all of that down and then I would write down how long each step would take so that I could estimate a little better how much time I really need. And then I could also go back to it and look where I could cut things out that doesn't that don't make that much sense or that take too long. And then and this way, I got to reduce the, the amount of time it took me to create one blog post by a whole lot. Number five, create one folder for freelancers. So just create one folder on the same level as your main part folders of your business and call it freelancers. I'll link another video on top of my head that goes step by step through the process of delegating tasks and how to find freelancers. So definitely check that out as well. Then it will make even more sense how you can combine the two things together. So anyway, you've got that folder and then you can also upload your instructions in there. Number six, create one folder for each freelancer and share with them. Now we'll go into that freelancer folder and then we'll create one folder for each freelancer and just name it after them then share this specific folder with that one freelancer. So this way you can upload specific instructions or in my case, I upload the outlines for the, my blog posts. I upload them in that folder. So my freelancer can just take them and do her work with that. And I've hired her through Upwork. So she delivers the work back on Upwork. But if I hired her directly or somewhere else, she would also deliver the work through that folder so it's really kind of your connection point where you can upload from both sides and then get it from the other side again. Number seven, have templates ready. Templates are a huge time saver. I think we can all agree on that. So pay attention if you're doing something more than once and you need a similar document, definitely have a template ready. So the easiest way to do that is to have one folder for each part of your business where you have those templates 
or the other thing you can do is to have one template in each subfolder where you create that kind of content or document so but the easiest way is to have that one folder and then for instance i have uh, templates for my discovery calls for my questionnaires for my contracts and probably a bunch of other things so that way you can just copy and paste the document and adapt it to the to your new needs and you'll be much faster done than if you had to recreate the whole document again now i have one last bonus tip for you and that is to color code your folders so this is something i haven't done because i didn't see the benefit of it and i like the clean gray look of or look and feel of it but if you're a very color oriented person that can be definitely very helpful so to do that simply do a right click on the folder, choose change color and then change the color that you'd like to have. Okay, so there you have it. These were all my tips, tricks and hacks to organize your Google Drive for your business. Now to help you get started right away, I've created a folder structure template. So it has two examples and then you have worksheets that you can use for your own business and for your own needs. So you can add the folder names in there so that you have a great overview of what's going on. And that way it will make it much easier to also do it consistently in your Google Drive. So definitely be sure to download that right now. It's linked in the description down below. So download it now and schedule a time in your calendar, take maybe two hours to really go through your Google Drive and organize all of it. It will take time once, but you'll be thankful for that for the rest of your business journey pretty much because it will save you so much time along the way. So get that download now and get started today. <laughs> In the coming videos, I'll talk a lot more about how to organize your business and set up simple structures using tools like Google Drive and Asana. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely be sure to hit the subscribe button down below so that you don't miss another video. If you like this video, hit the like button down below, share with your friends and hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.